Hello everyone, it's 10 things you need to know about the Land of the Morning Light, Black Desert's latest expansion. The Land of the Morning Light is inspired by Korean folklore and its Joseon Dynasty era. In-game, it will take place in and around the area formerly known as Port Rat. You'll be able to explore a brand new continent rich in Korean history and culture, from traditional Hanok villages to Hanbok-clad villages. There are a lot of references to So Kim. Nampo Harbor will be your first port of call and starting location of your new adventure. But on your journey, you will also be visiting the central hub for quests by the name of Dalbol Village. Since Mountain of Eternal Winter, adventurers have the choice to start their Black Desert journey from level 1 in a totally new area instead of the original Balanos questline. This will continue with the Land of the Morning Light as adventurers will also be able to start their journey here with a new character. The Land of the Morning Light takes a new approach to questing in Black Desert. After progressing through the initial questline, you will be able to select from eight different Korean folklore-inspired storybooks to explore in any order that you wish. These quests can be found in a log of fables, and you'll get to meet some of the monsters that make up Korean folklore, including the dreaded nine-tailed fox. As you progress through these storybooks, you'll unlock brand new adventure logs, which upon completion, will reward you with numerous valuables. With a new main quest line, also comes a completely new way to play Black Desert. For the Land of the Morning Light, there are no monster zones to run around in, and instead, the Black Shrine has been added. In this mode, you'll use light orbs to adjust your attributes and stats as you take on some of the most challenging fights Black Desert has to offer. This means for those of you that are worried about your gear, the orbs you receive from completing the main quest line will be of vital importance. This challenging mode will allow you to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the biggest bads in Korean folklore. Each boss has 10 levels of difficulty, known as Calamity Levels. To climb the leaderboard, you'll compete versus your fellow adventurers who play the same class as you to set the best completion time. There'll be separate leaderboards for both class and difficulty level. You'll be able to clear five bosses a week, and when one stage is cleared, you'll be able to try that boss as many times and at different calamity levels as you like. This is so that you can improve your timed rankings. Each week, your ranking rewards will be sent to you, rewarding you for your performance amongst other players on the same class. New regions bring new goodies to collect, and the Land of the Morning Light is no different. Tabex Belt is a new accessory that can be crafted using the Tabex Spirit. By combining a Tungrad Belt with the Essence of Tabex and a few other items, you'll be able to craft Tabex Belt, an accessory which unlocks the skill Blessing of Tabex. For those of you looking to complete their Deboraka collections, the Deboraka earrings have also been added. To craft this item, you'll need to obtain the Jewel of Illusion, an item that drops from level 4 and above bosses in the Black Shrine. These earrings unlock a new 3 set effect for Deboraka items, offering plus 12 AP. And we would be remiss if we didn't discuss the latest in boss gear upgrades, Dan's Gloves. Much like Labreska's helm and the Fallen God's armor, this piece requires some work to unlock. Not only will you need a set of gloves that can be upgraded, you will also need to grab yourself the Flame of Hongik. This item, which will allow you to convert your old gloves into a new and shiny Darn's Gloves. The flame is obtainable through the Land of the Morning Light bosses, and when crafted, you can choose whether you want Evasion or Damage Reduction Gloves. And if you wish to switch your gloves to the other version, you'll be able to complete a quest to switch between them. Looking for more spring in your step? Join the main quest line of the Land of the Morning Light. You'll be able to obtain two items. These items will be used to add additional crystal slots to your presets. These two extra slots can be filled with any crystal, including the all-new crystals that come with the Land of the Morning Light. Remember the days when Hooms, Makalods, and Gervish crystals were all the rage? 
Well, now you can relive those glory days thanks to the Crystal of Harmony, a crystal that you merge with the combined magic crystals and other materials to create the ultimate combined magic crystals. These new combined crystals carry some serious punch, so make sure to check them out when they make their way into Black Desert. And lastly, while we could talk about the ultra-powerful tier crystals, of which you can only equip one in your presets, each with an extensive list of stats, yeah, those, we'd like to talk about the life skill crystals. You can now get your hands on the Crystal of Forest, which is the key ingredient of creating the Life Skill Crystals. These two types of crystals, EXP and Mastery Crystals, will really make your Life Skill days pop. The Land of the Morning Light features no traditional residences. Instead, two new manors have been added, which can be rented after completing the Land of the Morning Light questline. Similar to the Blue Main Lion Manor in Serendia, the manors require a silver upkeep which varies depending on which of the manors you decide to rent. While one of the manors features open land and incredible views overlooking picturesque valleys, the other is a small cliffside shack with fantastic views over the ocean. There have also been over 100 new manor items added with a very Land of the Morning Light motif. These items can be used in any of the manors, both the Land of the Morning Light and the Mainland of Black Desert, and can really bring a sense of peace and tranquility to your hectic Black Desert life. New mini-games have been added to the Gathering Life Skills. You will embark on quests that revolve around life skills. Completing these quests will give you the Green Thumb Knowledge. This unlocks a skill called Green Artisan, this skill will allow you to turn on gathering minigames, which appear randomly as you're gathering. Spend a little bit of extra energy and get more resources while gathering. There is a new minigame for herbs, lumbering, meat gathering, fluid collecting, tanning, and mining. So go out and gather to your heart's content. Not only that, but through these minigames, you'll be able to obtain the Millennial Wild Ginseng, an item of extraordinary power and when consumed will grant you a buff for approximately three months. You can of course sell this for silver on the central marketplace. Sniper Rifle Hunting also gets some love with the Land of the Morning Light. As Marnie's Sniper Rifle has been added, this sniper will allow you to pick off unsuspecting prey from a distance. The new Hit Register feature will allow you to see exactly where you land your shots. And for those looking for adventures on the high seas, a new mid-tier ship has been added called the Panoxon. While the initial stats are lower than that of the Carrick, the ship allows you to gain a large crew, granting you full flexibility to customize how your Panoxon will operate on the high seas. Great news! Within the Land of the Morning Light, you'll also be able to hire your own Dokkabi workers. This Dokkabi can work at regular production nodes and also can be sent to the special exclusive crafting house to create unique items. You'll also encounter surprises with a swing of the magical Kebi bat. So, we hope everyone gives it a try. Life skillers already have quite a lot to be excited for with the life skill crystals, new mini games, and everything else we discussed. But new lands also bring new delicacies and cooking items for adventurers to discover. Some of the key items are the miraculous nourishing soup and iridescent Mewa liquor items, which boast incredibly powerful 30-minute buffs. There are also variations of gukba, a Korean-styled rice soup to improve your breath, strength, healthy XP, if your current level is below 40. Within the patch notes, there will also be a list of new substitute ingredients, such as being able to use rice along with wheat and barley when requiring a grain, or tiger blood when needing ogre and troll blood items. Make sure to check all of these out and see if any changes are made to your favorite recipes. And for those who cook or alchemize their way through new regions, two new utensils have been added. Both the new cooking and alchemy utensil reduce your cooking time by one second, making them perfect for power cooking vinegar or rushing through as many Valencia meals as your poor hands can cook. 
When the Land of the Morning Light launches, a Kafras extraction event will be available. This will allow you to get all those juicy Kafras back when going for your dance gloves. And finally, all this is fine and dandy, but if you have that explorer's itch and really want to jump in game, make sure to log in after maintenance of June 14th, as this is when Land of the Morning Light officially opens its borders.